Hi, this is Dave Bokey, and I'm going to talk to you today about how we're trying to make guardrails even easier to use and understand, whether you're a new user or a seasoned pro. Last launch week, launch week five, we did a few releases. One huge release was we introduced the Guardrails Hub and almost 150 policy packs that went along with it. The Hub is a great documentation area. It has all of our mods. You can see all of the 6,000 plus policies that we have for AWS, policies that we have for Azure, GCP, Kubernetes, ServiceNow. Uh, but the policy packs are really what shines there. 149 policy packs as of today for each cloud environment. Each of these policy packs is specific to a control objective that you might want to implement within your organization. You can drill into specific clouds, specific types of policy packs that you'd like to take a look at. This is a great way to see what others are doing with guardrails and how you can use these as starting points for your own control objectives that you might want to implement within your organization. Since the time that we released this, We've also done a few other things. One of the things that we've done is we've reorganized our documentation. So our documentation before we had a dozen different high level categories, which made it difficult to find what you were looking for. So we've really simplified that into a few key areas, the top level section, getting started, the core concept section that are really for people new to guardrails that want to understand the inner workings and the design intent behind guardrails and how it works. The new guide section, which I'll walk you through in a minute the frequently asked questions, obviously, and then a reference section uh, that has both the API reference, CLI references, language references as well for different terminology that we use in there. Before we dive in and start looking at some of the guides, the other thing I'd love to point out about this is not only have we simplified this, but we've made it easier than ever to collaborate by publishing the documentation in a public GitHub repo under our Turbot organization. So if you go to turbot slash guardrails docs on GitHub, you'll land here. If you dive into the docs, you'll see that behind the scenes, all of the documentation are just markdown files and images. So really easy for anyone to jump in and contribute. Maybe the best way that you can contribute if you don't wanna write for us is actually to just open issues. When you see a problem, when you see a typo, open an issue for us, that will get our attention. We'll get someone from the team on that to improve it. We'd also love uh, feature requests here in terms of uh, new content that you'd like to see, new guides that you'd like to see published within the documentation. So let's dive into what some of those guides look like. Under the Getting Started guides, we have this new section, Getting Started with AWS, and it has 10 new guides, everything from importing your AWS account, enabling your first policy pack, creating exceptions, creating calculated policies, sending alerts, applying quick actions, and even enabling enforcement. In a couple hours, if you go through all 10 of these guides back to back, you'll go from kind of what do I need to do on day one and walk through all the key features of guardrails and understand how those work in context in one of your accounts that you've imported. The other section here under the guide section, this is where we've put all the guides related to hosting, managing, and monitoring and troubleshooting your guardrails environment. As you can see here under the uh, hosting guardrails, there's a few sections, including an updated architecture guide, as well as installation guides for new users to guardrails. We've taken our own internal content that we use when we deploy our SaaS environment and publish that so people can see how to deploy guardrails within their environment with really easy to follow step-by-step -step guides. Each of these guides follows the same format and we spent a lot of time this launch week honing in on this format, what did we want here, trial and error with different approaches, and we really love kind of the way this ended up. As you can see, we always start with presentation to you of what you're gonna learn in this guide or what you're gonna do in this guide. So in this guide, you will you know, use AWS Service Catalog to upgrade the TED stack. We also have listed the prerequisites that you'll need for operating in this guide. And throughout the guide, you'll see sprinkled tips, cautions, alerts, those types of things in these call out sections. But the main part of the guide that I'd love to draw your attention to is the way that we've done this step by step. So step one, step two, we really simplified here the volume of text that you have to read in order to follow our documentation. In our previous documentation attempts, you'll see where some of that content is still in the system. We've shied away from using images in that content mainly because we were worried about like the images getting out of date more quickly than the text would get out of date. But it put a huge burden on us to write the prose, to write the script that was gonna be published. And it also put a huge burden on the user of the, the guides and the user of the documentation to read just walls of text. If you're reading a book, that's great, but on the web, you really want shorter text with more explanation. And we think we've really landed there 
uh, with a very consistent way of doing our screenshots, very consistent way of pointing out, highlighting the screenshots, and then short text, short steps that really draw your attention specifically to what you're going to be using there. We really think this is gonna be super valuable for the people using guardrails to just follow this, these step-by-step -step guides, have a lot less text that they have to read through, be able to scan them easily, and then just follow step-by-step -step and execute against the guide. At the end of each guide, as you get through the steps, you'll find that the very last step is a review step where you get to see what you did successfully. And then if it wasn't successful for any reason, we, we also offer some troubleshooting guides and tips at the very end of each of the guides for common things that we know that can go wrong as you're executing the guide. That in a nutshell is, is what the new guides look like. Uh, we hope that you get a lot of use out of them. And if you're not getting use out of them, if they're not valuable to you, or if there's guides missing that you would love to see, we'd love that feedback. Either on the GitHub repo, open an issue to us, or jump in channel on Guardrail's Slack community. Let us know in channel what's missing, uh, what you'd like to see updated, etc. We love that feedback. We thrive off of it and really looking forward to people using these things and getting a lot of value out of them. We love Guardrails. We love our users. We want them to be successful with the product. We hope you can turn some of that love back to us and help us make it even better and make it even easier for you to do the things that you need to do within the product. Thank you for watching the video. If you're not yet using guardrails and but you think your team could get some value out of it, please reach out to us at turbot.com start. We'd love to hear from you.